Vanadium is a very, very useful element. It um, is used as the pure metal, as um, in alloys with steel to improve the hardness. Uh, alloys of vanadium with steel of just uh, a quarter of a percent vanadium can significantly improve the hardness of steel. Uh, vanadium as vanadium pentoxide is, a is used as a catalyst for making sulfuric acid and as an oxidizer for other processes. Vanadium pentoxide is also used as a ceramic glaze. Vanadium dioxide is um, used in glass to block infrared light. Vanadium compounds can also be used to make superconducting magnets. Vanadium also has a significant biological role, and many vanadium compounds are actually toxic because they inhibit certain biological functions. Many toxic mushrooms actually have some vanadium in them. All right. So now that you've got a taste of all the myriad different applications of vanadium, I'm going to show you some vanadium in action in aqu as um, aqueous vanadium in different oxidation states. This method uh, that I use is different from most methods which start with either vanadium pentoxide or a metavanidate salt. In this method, I get to all of the easily accessible ox ox oxidation states of vanadium starting with pure vanadium metal. All right, let's go to the lab. After many, many different attempts and lots of failure, I finally found a way to get to start with vanadium metal and end up with all its different oxidation states that are easily accessible. As of the uploading of this video, I haven't found another source on the internet that shows you how to get to all vanadium's easily accessible or relatively easily accessible oxidation states when you start with vanadium metal. The only ones I've seen start with vanadium pentoxide or a metavanidate ion. And vanadium metal can be purchased in smaller quantities and it can be cheaper. If you're starting with vanadium metal like I am, the first thing you need to do is get the vanadium out of solution. So I'm putting it in nitric acid because vanadium doesn't react with hydrochloric acid. Uh, the vanadium turnings you can get off of eBay or someplace like that. Notice that when the vanadium first reacts with the nitric acid, you see a greenish color, but then very quickly it turns darker black. The dark black color is from an actual mix of blue and green. The green is vanadium in the plus 3 oxidation state, and the blue is vanadium in the plus 4 oxidation state. When the vanadium first reacts with the nitric acid, it goes to plus 3. But because nitric acid is an oxidizing acid, at least this is my theory, it'll actually partially oxidize it all the way to plus 4. Um, now, if you want to get it all to plus 4, there is a very easy uh, thing to do, which is to add some sodium sulfite. Sodium sulfite is great because if, it's, if you get vanadium in the plus 5 oxidation state, uh, here's it a bit more diluted, but the same. If you get vanadium in the plus 5 oxidation state, then it'll reduce it down to plus 4. And if it's in the plus 3 oxidation state, it'll oxidize it um, up to plus 4. So if you add sodium sulfite, it tends toward getting to plus 4. Notice that that's kind of bluish green, which means that it's a mix of plus 4 and plus 3. Now, if I add some sodium sulfite to it, like I'm doing right now, you'll see that the green color actually disappears and it becomes a really nice blue characteristic of vanadium in the plus 4 oxidation state. So that's how you can get vanadium to the plus 3 and then plus 4 oxidation states. Alright, now I'm going to show you how to get vanadium to an even higher oxidation state, plus 5. You can start either with the blue solution of plus 4 or the green solution of plus 3. Here I'm starting with the green plus 3 solution um, that I got just by reacting the vanadium metal with nitric acid and then diluting it without adding any other chemical. There's probably a little bit of plus 4, but it's mostly plus 3. Now what I'm doing is adding sodium chlorate, which is a strong oxidizer. Although I haven't tried this, I would assume that any other really strong uh, oxidizer would work as well. That's the white powder you see at the bottom of the test tube. Now I'm mixing it up with my pipette, and you can see that after quite a bit of mixing, there is a distinct color change. The solution slowly gets lighter and lighter, 
um, notice that the sodium chlorate is gone. And that kind of reddish color is vanadium in the plus 5 oxidation state. As you may have realized, it's kind of hard to get the vanadium, the green vanadium plus 3 without any uh, vanadium plus 4. And in this picture, I have almost pure vanadium plus 3, and I'll t tell you how to get to that. There are two different methods for this. One, uh, in my opinion, the easier, especially if you're starting with vanadium metal, is just to react the vanadium metal with nitric acid such that there is an excess of vanadium metal so the nitric acid doesn't have an, a chance to oxidize it beyond that, and, and to react it with a cap on the test tube loosely so the nitrogen dioxide gas can get out. What I'm doing right now is adding sodium chlorate, a strong oxidizer, to the solution of vanadium plus 3 to slowly oxidize it, skipping plus 4 all the way to vanadium plus 5. I get a much stronger color in this reaction, which is why I'm showing you this, although sadly I wasn't able to get on tape how I, uh, how I got the pure green. Um, so there you can see the reaction is almost done, but when I actually stir it up with the pipette, you see that the color gets much, much brighter. That's why I showed you this clip. Getting vanadium to the plus two oxidation state, starting with vanadium metal, is pretty difficult. Um, after a couple days of experimentation and many, many hours in the lab, I finally figured out a method to get there. I'm going to show you that method in this clip. Step one is really easy. Take some vanadium metal and put it in nitric acid. You'll get the green stuff we've already talked about. Now, the next step is what's different. Start to heat the solution with a propane torch. Of course, the solution will start to boil, but then after a while you get a cool color change. This is because the vanadium plus three ions and the nitrate ions come out of solution and make solid vanadium trinitrate. That is kind of the reddish brown color you see right now. Then let the precipitate settle and decant off the liquid at the top. What I'm then going to do is add hydrochloric acid. The reason I do this is because you, you need to have a double displacement reaction uh, take place. Um, from many different experiments I did, I realized that actually you cannot reduce, or it's very difficult anyway to reduce, I wasn't able to reduce uh, vanadium trinitrate uh, down to vanadium dinitrate. I think the nitrate anion is too oxidizing. That's why I'm doing this double displacement reaction, so I try to get vanadium trichloride. The reason I can't just react it, start with vanadium trichloride is because vanadium metal will not react with hydrochloric acid. That's why you need to have this intermediate step. You should add about that much hydrochloric acid. Now I've decanted off that extra stuff because I'm, you have to boil this solution. So um, you can boil it in stages or just decant off that amount and then uh, start to boil this amount. The reason you have to boil it, I'm pretty sure, is, is that uh, the reaction doesn't take place at room temperature. Notice that as I heat up the test tube, there's a nice color change and it turns kind of a greenish color. This should be uh, vanadium plus 3 and chloride ions in solution, as opposed to vanadium plus 3 and nitrate uh, um, ions in solution. All right, the intense bubbling you see now is me adding the reducing agent, zinc. Zinc, I found, can very slowly reduce um, the vanadium plus 3 to vanadium plus 2, provided there are chloride ions in solution and not nitrate ions in solution. So, you just put the zinc in there and uh, wait for about an hour for it to get a really nice purple. For some reason, it seems to actually be oxidized a little bit first before it starts to be reduced. I'm not sure what, why this is, but if you see that, don't worry. If the solution ever turns black, I found that heating will, will react those tiny zinc particles making it, making it black and will restore a colorless or a clear solution. All right, this is after a few minutes, and you'll see that there is a very faint purplish lilac color. And this is after about a couple hours. This is after a couple hours. You'll see that it's not as deep as you can get with a metavanidate ion, but it's still definitely vanadium 2 plus.
Uh, one thing you should know is that upon heating or even just leaving it out in the air for a while without any zinc in it, uh, the vanadium 2 plus will oxidize to vanadium 3 plus. So be careful of that. One more thing I'll show you. Uh, when I showed you vanadium in the plus 5 oxidation state, it was actually complexed. So this, I'll show you how to get it when it's not complexed. Follow the same steps that I showed you uh, earlier to get to a solution of vanadium 3 plus and chloride ions. At that point, add sodium chlorate. That will oxidize the vanadium to plus 5 without complexing it. Continue adding until you have a yellow solution. There you go.